all you lovely kings, queens, and in-betweens. My name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be talking about my experience making a new Unison Lee character, because that's what you do when you're bored and you have a spare device lying around. After downloading our lovely little mobile RPG, we get Unison fired up and have to remember who we are, Simba. Erm, whoever you are. I vaguely recall this generic amnesia opening from my first time creating an account about seven years ago, and genuinely wish there was a way to skip, skip, skip through it because... Girl, it drags. But in any case, I settle on playing a Lancer this time around, since I haven't really played them much during my time on Unison League, and progress from basic character creation to hand-holding. And girl, this is the bit I met before, the bit that really drags, especially as a veteran player who actually knows what they're doing and doesn't need all of this hand-holding, which includes reinforming me of basic game mechanics like which abilities I can use in battle and ability costs. Grr, I want to skip, skip, skip. Anyway, after what feels like a bloody eternity, your favorite panda makes it through the introduction to the game, aka the torturous tutorial, and is finally allowed to venture off into the world on her own. Huzzah! It's like getting your starter in Pokemon Red. You're just so excited to go out and finally do stuff. And in my case, it skip all the story and dialogue because I woke up and chose violence this morning. And I just want to smash some things into smithereens. Erm, um, stab them? to smithereens? You get the idea. And for various reasons, smashing things to smithereens was far easier this time around than I recall it being the first time around. The first reason that comes to mind is the hand-holding. The excessive hand-holding. And I say this because although we had the tutorial before, we have a few features that I don't recall being in existence when I began playing Unison League seven years ago. Although there was a beginner spawn for new players then too, I recall it being far more limited in the sense that you could only use it once, whereas the new version of the spawn just hands you some shiny new stuff and gives you some decent starter gear for cheap on the DL. Another thing that really helped me was the knowledge I brought to this playthrough as a veteran. More about this later. And the final thing was a change that transpired a few years back, which made the main quest line more solo friendly than ever before. Back before this change took place, it was nearly impossible to get through the main quest line without assistance, especially for someone like me who was playing a cleric. It took me ages and forced me to work with my guild to make friends and games so I could continue to progress. To be honest, I think this kept me playing more than anything back then. I grew close to my guild and we all scheduled times to work together and help each other reach our in-game goals. We still have a line channel to this day and although we don't speak or get together as frequently as we used to, especially because a lot of them moved on to Genshin Impact and Switch games I don't possess, we still do keep up with one another. I feel like this experience and dynamic is much harder to recreate in the present state of the game, since you don't need anyone else to progress through the quest line and the devs have definitely dialed the challenge down by a large amount. There's no reason for you to communicate with your guild or other players or make friends to continue your gameplay. And I feel like this takes something away from the experience, because let's be honest, most games are a lot more fun when you have cool people to play them with. With that being said, it's nice to be able to do things on your own too. I remember how hard it was to progress without my guild when I first started playing this game, and how frustrating it was for me before I became friends with them because I was weak and had no one to ask for advice, and had no idea what I was doing. Because all things considered, this game is fairly complex for a mobile app. I could see why people who struggled to make friends would rage quit, which is bad for the devs who want to keep the game alive. It was also harder back then because the gear cap was so low. 27 and then 30 costs were beastly for quite some time back then. So arguably at the cost of friendship, the devs made the game more accessible to a wider player base by holding their hands a little longer than they used to and by making the game more solo and user friendly over the years. And I could really, really see the difference. I flew through the main quest line this time around. Something that took me months to get through years ago took only a few days this time around, simply because I ran out of AP and or got lazy and decided to do something else with my time. Another drastic change I noticed was how easy it was to unlock all of the classes and their abilities, get my gear score over 1 million, and generally level up in the game. Although I faced a multitude of glitches, such as my personal favorite fighting invisible monsters, I think all of these feats were much easier this time around for several different reasons as well. First, as I mentioned previously, the game is a lot more lone wolf friendly than it used to be. Second, with each new character I make, I acquire new knowledge. As a result, I was able to bring a wide breadth of knowledge to this playthrough, which let me know which spawns to avoid and which to spend all of my gems on, allowing me to acquire good gear far faster than ever before. Furthermore, the game hands out gear to new players like their trick-or-treaters on Halloween. All you have to do is make your way through the main quest line and you can obtain decent gear that's often pre-infused and reforged and augmented for you. This was not a thing that happened before. Maybe you got some prestige, experience, and money. Maybe some gems if you were super lucky. But the devs never just handed you shiny new gear. Couple this with the fact that gear is stronger than ever before. Like I said, cost 27s and 30s were the jam for quite some time when I started playing. And it's really, really really easy to massively raise your gear score with just a few infusions. To put things in perspective, it took me a little over two years to get my gear score over 1 million with my first
Tess character, Kara the Cleric. It was really, really hard to do when I started playing because of level caps and gear limitations, among other things. It was an accomplishment to get to this point in the game. This time around, it took a grand total of four days of relatively casual play for me to get to this point in the game. Four days! That was simply unheard of when I started playing and kind of insane for someone who has become a Unison League dinosaur like me. Progress began to rapidly taper off after that, but after only a few months, I've managed to hit about 1.75 million in gear score on this new Lancer, something that took, I don't know, upwards of four years on my previous accounts. In sum, this experience confirms something I had already known. The game is getting far easier to play and in so doing has practically eradicated the need to make friends and play with a group. This is arguably what bothers me most about new Unison League, because there's no reason to team up with anyone or make friends. There's no real challenge involved in the game anymore. Even the hard and challenging quests the devs throw together don't seem challenging anymore and can often be beaten by brute force alone as opposed to carefully managing your gear with elemental advantages. The sort of growth a new player can make in a matter of mere days is insane, and while I can understand the devs' decision to try and keep new and younger players from getting frustrated by making things far easier on them, it can be frustrating for older and veteran players who want to challenge and had to work so much harder to get where they are today. It's not the player's fault, just poor game balancing and management, and that essentially wraps up my experience over the past few months. Why did all of you lovely kings queens and in-betweens think? Are you a newer or veteran player? A returning player or someone who has simply experimented with multiple accounts? What was your experience if you made more than one account? Was it similar to my own experience or entirely different? Let me know down below in the comments. I always like to hear from all you lovely folks. And if you like what you saw here today, please smash that like button until it's blue, subscribe and ring that bell so you'll know what's up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys! Hi, Tasia Valenza, aka Poison Ivy, and you've just been watching King's Entertainment Reviews. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and watch.